Welcome, everyone. This is Planet Needles, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at Blaze, Zeus, and Lotro, and here at Lotro Players. And this week we have with us Terry Edwin. Hi, hi. Sans Winda. Hello. Where in this? Hello, everyone. Calabathian. Uh, Calabathian? Did you not hear me? <laughs> no. Hello! We heard you then. And Krister. Hello. Someday we'll get through all of that without <laughs> anyone being <to> cut off. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not the day. <laughs> Let's head into our news in Lotro, where we will be. There we go. Where we will begin with update 30.1.2, which is, of course, another update to the Blood of Ozog, where the special note is that they have started the Treasure Boogan event that has arrived. And when I saw this, I'm saying, the what, the what, the what? Yes, the Treasure Boogan event is here. World-renowned treasure seeker Theodore Gors needs your assistance. All <laughs> his does. priceless relics have gone missing. To participate in the Treasure Boogan event, seek out Theodore Gors in any scaling instances set at to your level. You can even bring your friends and kinmates. Theodore will offer you a selection of cosmetic rewards for your help. Make sure to look out for a sneaky boogan trying to escape with stolen treasures. Help stop many sneaky boogans to receive even more rewards. The Treasure Boogan event begins on Thursday, July 22nd, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, which is already passed, and runs through Monday, July 26th, which means if you're not listening to this live, you will have very little time left to it. Every time that you play a scaling instance around your level, there is a chance for a treasure boogan to appear. Defeat the boogan and reclaim its stolen treasure before it flees. The boogan does not attack you, but instead runs around evading your attacks. Turn in your coins of the boogan to barter vendor Theodore Gross at the start of any scaling instance to pick up various rewards. Also, complete Seeking the Treasure Boogans four times to earn Virtue XP, a Virtue Acceleration Tome, and assorted an assortment of crafting supplies. And has anyone actually done this? Uh, we saw it last night when we were running stairs. We did see the, the uh, vendor, and uh, we ended up killing the Boogan uh, uh, several times uh, during the ones last night so it's basically it looks like we get uh, you need to kill him four times you get like four of whatever the the uh, trading items are and from what i hear we can get a bat i've heard i've heard rumors of a bat i don't know if it's true or not. Ooh. and are we talking about the flying mammal or are we talking about a two-handed weapon Ooh. Boy, I, I was talking about the mammal, but boy, a baseball bat would be pretty nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, more likely you wind up with a cricket bat. Oh, I That's don't true. know. I think it's a swing and a miss. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> you guys set me up, and then you groaned when I make these bad jokes, man. <laughs> okay, That's a sign yes. of approval. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very well. I suppose that if we bullet right to the... <laughs> right to the Vastman, he'll knock it out. Yep. Let's then see what else we have in here with uh, with ten uh, the update 30.1.1. Several epic battle item set bonuses were changed so that they would no longer function on the character of level 106 or higher. This change is now being made to all epic battles item set bonuses. Not just a few of them. 
And for quests and adventure errors in the Fall of Hazadoom, lockdown will now be removed between phases. Christopher, what does that mean? Uh, that sounds like uh, one of the mechanics we haven't encountered yet. <laughs> All right. And for Tier 5, which is definitely a mechanic that Christopher hasn't encountered yet, Morale of Summoned Blazing and Abyssal Regmo has been reduced. Summon Blazing Regmul will no longer apply Suffocating Smoke. The cooldown and initial cooldown of Summon Blazing Regmul's fulmination has been reduced. And Summon Abysmal Regmul will now only use Chasing Shadows during Phase 1. Oh, you're saying Regmul. I thought you said Red Bull, like the drink. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was confused for half a second. <laughs> It's like, man, Red Bull really d does give you wings. <laughs> Rogmals give you wings. There's something there. Uh, yes, Red Bull is just so powerful. It could even give Balrogs wings. Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Also, Floyd and DeWitt have been moved to a nearby accessible area in the Dehirian, which implies then that their old location became inaccessible. Yeah, that would make sense if that's what if they moved them. Had it someplace problematic? I don't know. I didn't even know. But I haven't found all the locations where Floyd and DeWitt are. So, I guess they would have. Well, there had there, is there are some one... potentially dangerous ones. There are some yeah. potentially dangerous locations. And and considering, uh, maybe they they were having an issue with the phasing. I don't know because I know where it is normally, just outside of Lothlorien, and I can't imagine that that's a very charming area during the the. Uh, Era that we were seeing in, yes, in the, but the latest Stearns area, but but the, but they shouldn't be there in the lit, in the earlier uh -huh. era since that would have been well before they were born. That we know of. Wait and wait. Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they had oh, when he's drinking, they're pickled. <laughs> Maybe they had to change some landscape, something or other, around there, though. I suppose that's a possibility. They could be yeah. like the Dread Pirate Roberts, where it's not really a person. Floyd and Dewey are just a title that are passed to the next generations. <laughs> I like this idea. <laughs> the Dread Pirate Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> Let's then head into known issues for the Treasure Mugen event because what is a new event with especially a new surprise event that I don't has anyone here even heard of a rumor of this before it was released? Nope. No. Okay, I just it's wanted to make surprise. sure that I, I wasn't the only one that was saying, huh? What in the world? Yeah, I saw it in the patch show, so I was like, what the heck is a Treasure Mugen event? <laughs> Bugandy, Bugandy, Bugandy. Who thought it okay. was a good idea to to improve events? I say improve in air quotes. You guys can't see it, but I am using the air quotes. Improve events by adding boogans to it. Boogans do not improve things. <laughs> yes, there is that. I would have a. I want to get a, have the feeling that this is not going to be the most popular event in the history of Lotro. Well, also, maybe they're going to start using the Boogans as Mrs. Dash. Just dash, you know, every event, add a couple Boogans. <laughs> no, no. This that, is is not not good good <laughs> that is not good eats, as Alton Braun would say. Definitely not good. I mean, we're not going to have uh, Boogan bits. No. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, uh. <laughs> Balrogs are exciting, but Boogans, oh, no. Yeah. All right. For the known issue, the Treasure Boogan is not appearing in several instances there where they should be. 
Amdan and Damu, the bloody threshold, the depths of Chazadum, the fall of Chazadum. Oh, oh, that's the depths of Kizu All right. Thikil uh, Gundu and the seat of the great goblin. I guess. I guess those boogans are afraid of the great goblin. Must be. Yeah. And this week, the Lotro Beacon is back. We have Lotro Beacon issue 212. That is boiling. And boiling. on the top. Yes. The. Hang on. I have. I was about to say, if it's boiling, then something's wrong. <laughs> the beacon is boiling. Well, I was thinking it was boiling since it was 212. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. For our community I can go with the percolation. Okay. For our community spotlight, Bloodborne interviews, Lotro producer um, Raninia, and you can watch the interview over on Bloodborne's YouTube channel. The Bounders of the Shire have once again returned for a month of chicken-themed events. You can find the poster for this year's Month of the Chicken below. And there's a there's a pool party at Belay Gear. Well, there was one sometime today. Trollfinger brings your songs from another age tomorrow on Langeable. That is a Sunday, the 25th of July, if you manage to hear this before the event. And the Belay Gear open air concert goes into its second year on August 14th. And if you'd like to nominate something for the community spotlight, you contact email contact at standingstonegames.com with the subject of community spotlight. So here is our weekly comment. What should you be able to catch with a fishing pole in Middle Earth? Fish. A little dragon pet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fish. <laughs> The elderly. Not weeds, not daggers, not rusty buckets. Fish. Fish. That's it. You know, I want to make a character named Rusty Buckets now. <laughs> you know, what I'm trying to say this, though, y'all, but. It's that all those things are disguised as fish until the moment that you take it off the hook. Go ahead, come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say if, if any of y'all have ever actually gone fishing, you find that you you often catch strange animals like sometimes snakes and a whole bunch of times turtles. You know, I've never caught either of those, but I've caught lots of trees behind me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I have occasionally Do you put up much of a struggle? <laughs> they put up a huge struggle and told my dad to put something out. <laughs> no, there my was one uncle place accidentally, that... um, my, my, my uncle, uh, who has, I think he's now passed, but uh, one of them, but uh, my uncle actually um, caught his own eyebrow once. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. So, you know, Things that, but, but we're talking about things you should be able to catch with a, a fishing pole. Eyebrows are not one of them. <laughs> oh, no. And... Kilobathian, I won't hear what you said as, uh, as if your uncle didn't have an eyebrow, but then he managed to catch one one day, and then he got an eyebrow. <laughs> That's how I'm going to imagine. No, with with the current with the current trend of you know false eyelashes and and you know drawing in your eyebrows, I just you might as well go ahead and just start casting for those to catch a big eyelash. <laughs> Ooh. Mm-hmm. I suppose. I suppose we be too much hope for enchanting enchantment books, right? <laughs> Yeah, you probably. know what? We That'd should be, cool. be able to catch with a fishing pole in Middle Earth scrolls. Lots of them, like chest oh, scroll of legendary item scrolls. <laughs> fishing scrolls. Yes. I'd even be okay if it was disguised as a fish. 
<laughs> oh, hey, I caught an amberjack. No, wait. <laughs> it's a level 74 scroll. It just Okay, so you should also be able to catch a singing bass with your fish. With your fish. <laughs> One of the wall-mounted singing bass. That's what you need. Yep. You, you guys can't see this, this but I'm over here shaking my head. <laughs> at least one that you can actually <laughs> to sing. Yes. It actually comes with a little song that you can, you know, when you put it up on your wall in your house. You know, it moves and it actually sings, Take me to the river. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> we have dreams. Dreaming pigs, and we have a more door, uh, you know, door. We can have a singing bass on the wall. Oh, someone said, responded to the question with a boogan. <laughs> <laughs> no. <What is> treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Boogans do not make things better, people. <laughs> Oh, and, better with so, someone agrees. Someone agrees with Terry Edward by saying, "We should, we should fish, not a boot." <laughs> that must be Canadian. It's a boot. What is it? A boot? It's a boot. <laughs> it's a boot, a boot. Uh, but everything's better with boogans. That should be the slogan. That is not true. <laughs> Well, okay, so if Terry just sends to it, then Terry, I've got a product for you. Have you tried? I can't believe it's not Boogan. <laughs> I apologize. That, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> with that, let's head into our fan site news. Massively OP lets you relive this year's weather stock with embedded videos. L. Brand continues to post a screenshot journey through the books. Locho Stream is your first stop to find Locho on Twitch. This week, Red Baron gets a surprise visit. Druid's Fire heads to Weatherstock, and the Tolkien Professor leaves Eowyn. Also on Twitch, Exile Stealth runs River Hant Tier 3. Day 5005 goes on a big adventure, and the Green Eyed Gamer celebrates 500 followers. And over on YouTube, Louis 7 runs instances and more. Life Beyond the Shire wraps up a new Quest Tracker plugin, and Jenkin TV runs Lotro in VR? What? It's the next gen, Jesus. man. It's it's really like the the orcs and everything are coming after you. Ooh. <laughs> I could just imagine. <laughs> the Battle of the Moranin in VR. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Let's then head to our screenshot of the week where Aragorost and Aralyn marked the last night of Midsummer with fireworks at their Buffalo's home. Submit your screenshot for consideration by emailing it to lotro at settingstonegames.com. And that is it for the Lotro Beacon. So let's head over to store sales. And Terry Adwin, what's for sale this week? Well, our free weekly coupon is a free gold die with coupon code All That Glitters now through July 29th. Our summer sales this week give us 30% off deed boosts, meh, 50% off enhanced reputation supplies, eh, and 75% off the Runekeeper class if you don't already have it. Um, and then we get 25 20% off crafting junk. Crafting guild access, ingredient packs, crafting accelerators, rapid craft, crafting gears, and recipe books, all through July 29th. Blah. I take it that Terry is not excited about this. <laughs> you, you guys know this. <laughs> yes. 
And it looks like oh, we have a new player question. What's the question this week? What is a boogan? What is a Not boogan? Butter. <laughs> Nobody knows what a boogan is. Anyone wish to feel this? <laughs> Well, my mom always used to say that life was like a box of boogans. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry. I've had far too much okay. coffee today. So. Don't we see boogans outside of the uh, Hobbit-ish village in um, Anidwaith? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they're in Anidwaith. I I would sometimes call them ho um, hoblins. <laughs> yeah, they're like a cross between a hobbit and a goblin, and that's just wrong. <laughs> it's just wrong. That is yes. wrong. It's Ew. so wrong. I mean, I think that that is uh, actually like a folk, like a mythological, like a hob hobgoblin. <laughs> um, type that of actually creature. would make sense. <laughs> I mean, it is real. Word. I've read it somewhere not in Lotro, which is why I was going, why are we having a book and event? Oh yeah, they have they were in Enidwaith, but Okay. Well Miriam Webster defines Boogan as meaning either ghost or hobgoblin, depending on the location. I'm guessing, Krista, they did not look like ghosts. Or were they ghosts? If... You've encountered them. Well, let's think about how ghosts look, you know. Um they didn't have transparent clothing. Uh, they weren't floating. Um, they just looked like hobbits, but they charged a lot more money for everything. It was really kind of ridiculous. <laughs> well, yeah. Definitely no Lotro Boogans. <laughs> so, anyway, those, those are those... Yes. Those... As I said, said those hoblins that are in in and wife okay and now apparently run running around uh instances this weekend okay <laughs> what you actually want to run into those guys <laughs> no i was just saying like that would be another place that somebody this weekend might have encountered them yes yeah, okay. according oh, that's to the notes mean. that we just read yes yes that yes they would be appearing all over the place and as Terry Edwin says, why? <laughs> 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 Let's head into our week in gaming and find out whether or not Terry Edwin has been hunting for boogans. Oh, in fact, I've barely been in Lotro. Um, I popped because Sands wasn't available on Tuesday, so we didn't do our Tuesday thing. I did pop into the field trip on Friday. Um, long enough to demonstrate that yes, the 130 champion is superior to lower level champions. Um, is it Xerox? Yeah. It was Xerox champion was like level 123. And <laughs> uh, I, I don't typically run Terry on Anonymous because I don't do more stuff. So he must have inspected me at one point. He's like, wow, your LIs are really, really, really up there. I said, yeah, they're maxed. Because um, I stopped playing most of my other characters at higher tier, higher levels because they made the LA grind insane. And I generally don't care about the LA grind on most of my lower level characters. Most of my any other characters. Um, but Terry's LIs are actually... Both of them are maxed. So now, now, are you talking about like they made it insane recently, or like was this a previous insanity that caused you to stop maxing your eyes? No, this was this was when they originally made those ally changes to make the grind really, really super grindy and sucky. Um, which actually is kind of when I stopped being in Lotro all the time, honestly. <clears throat> You know, when we changed our segment from Week in Lotro to Week in Gaming. Well, I was just uh, wondering, because I didn't think you were maxing allies before that either, because it was I too wasn't grindy, maxing so. allies before that, but I just, I mean, I kind of gave up on a lot of my higher level characters altogether after that. Because um, I didn't care about maxing the allies, 
But the fact that it became basically impossible to do on multiple alts um, made me not want to play multiple alts. So, Fair. Uh, yeah, so he was looking at the LIs and then he asked me about my traits and I realized that I sent him a screenshot of my traits almost a year ago from when he asked me. And I've it's changed by two points. I've I've earned a whole two trait points in the last year. Um at some point I do need to go back and every time somebody asks me about traits it reminds me that I need to go find out find and acquire the missing ones because I'm missing like five of them. Um because then I can be really super awesome sauce. But yeah. Because uh, <laughs> he was saying something about his morale was at 100,000. And I said yeah. In seven levels you can look forward to it being almost triple that. Because uh, Terry's morale. Before any kind of buffs. Just from her gear. Is uh, 298,000 morale. Um, before any kind of scrolls or food or anything. Which. Granted, isn't great compared to a lot of the tankier classes, but this is a redline champion. I mean, that's not even her tank spec. That's because the the blue line actually gets more morale. Uh, and Star Wars, I finished chapter two on my Sith Inquisitor. <sighs> Lucky me, we took a run through Hoth. <clears throat> or we took a slog through Hoth. Uh, I was about to say run. Uh, yeah, well, the Tauntauns did the running. We just kind of... They did. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I don't hate Hoth as much as I hate some of the other planets. Uh, it's just, it's it's a slog. Um, but honestly, it's not so bad when you're not trying to do the planet story on top of doing the character story. Um, you actually managed to get through it a lot easier. And uh, also, Calabathian discovered that trying to well, grind for her own with... Tauntaun yeah. is not something she's going to be doing. Because it's, it's still really super oh. grinding and ridiculous. Um, and my bounty hunter almost finished chapter one. Except I was falling asleep. So we tabled that instance for uh, later. Yes, because we were in the instance the and she one almost instead. fell asleep during the fight. And I'm like, that's an exciting fight right there. Let me tell well, you. <laughs> you know, fortunately, she doesn't actually need me for anything because her companion was on tank stance and my companion's on heels. So at that point, I'm really just kind of superfluous. Um, and then in House Flipper, which I haven't played in a while, but uh, the development team did a stream this week about the luxury DLC that they're coming out with and showcasing some of the features and stuff and I'm super excited for it but it's not coming out until quarter four boo but yeah that was my week Calabathian how about you glad you asked um Lotro um I went through the battle of the Moranin like gate uh, which starts with a bunch of talking and ends with me getting lost repeatedly. <laughs> Actually, that was all through it. Th they should really, we discussed this uh, during during the whole thing, but we honestly should have a title. I mean, we've got Easily Lost. We should have the title that is just um, Eternally Lost and that one I will wear with pride because, uh, yeah. But um. But yeah, so I did not know, by the way, that uh, if you do not fight and go through this part, uh, the instances there with your character, much like um, there in Angmar, if you don't deal with uh, and, and go through the quest line for the big statues there, um, it's insta-death no matter your level. Yeah. Same thing with the Black Gate. If you don't go through that um, set of instances um, and you try to ride up to the Black Gate, it doesn't matter what level you are, you will die. You will just, like, fall off your horse and be dead. Um, 
which I didn't test, so I'm I'm going off of of everybody else's you know words here, and I'm pretty sure that if Sans was the one that said it, she probably did test it. But <laughs> I um, did try knocking <laughs> on the door, but they killed me instead of answering the door. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'm I'm kind of happy that that I managed to do that. Um, still haven't finished off all of my um like level 74 scrolls in that area so there will be some more grinding but we did go through with Kelevorn um and start doing stuff at the Bjorninghus so that I can actually start leveling up and try to get to 130 so that I can run with everyone on Tuesday nights and not not you know be a sad little puppy who's left behind um but also related <clears throat> because before we went and did that um, on Shadowfax, the, um, we also made a kinship uh, yesterday for everybody on Shadowfax for the Academy, and we were joining it, and so that that's fun. We're still, you know, wee babies trying to, to you know, go through, like, deadly, the average deadly rating, but, um, but yeah, we're, we made a kinship there, and I actually kind of came in a little bit late, and so I have no idea what the kinship name means. And I, but I oh. think it's what Greek. Well, yes, it's the Greek word for evergreen, and we thought it was really funny because we've, when I tr finally figured out how something resembling to what it might be pronounced like, it comes out something like Athelus. Nice. <laughs> 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 okay which then um since Winja actually uh posted the greek word for folly in discord uh right about the time i, I jumped in and i was like ma'am that's greek and she goes yes it's uh the greek word for folly and how do you pronounce it moria <laughs> whoa <laughs> yep Dun, dun, dun. Tolkien the linguist strikes again. <laughs> yep. So, um, nope. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So then on Star Wars, um, I got through chapter three of the Sith Warrior class story. And after chapter three, when you end that, that's pretty much the end of the base game. Um, and so, I've got like one out of eight, you know, tick marked off as, you know, finishing my, my class stories. But this is the, the Sith warrior that um, is female and managed, you know, was trying to romance uh, Malavi Quinn. And by the end of the game, everything is moving so fast that, you know, by the end of the game, I'm now afraid to go off to Ilum and come back now because of how fast everything went in, like, the last three, you know, like, last three parts um, that I, I actually went through because it was just like, and I'm like, oh, Lord, do I really want to go to Ilum? <laughs> hmm. If I come, I'm gonna come back from Ilum and be, like, have five kids and nine grandkids and, and <laughs> you know, an army and a navy and I'll be the emperor or something I, at this point. So yeah, um, very fast at the end. I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised, but also a little bit like, holy crap. But um, also on Star Wars, uh, my, my sniper discovered a horrible secret in his storyline and had to make a tough choice. The next sniper that I'm going through is actually uh, going to romance Bug Boy called Vector. Um, but uh, once we get to that point, I'm actually going to see if I can make a different choice without Vector because he disapproves highly of this choice. But I'm going to, to make this other choice so that I, I can see what happens. Anyway, if that's not, um, I don't know, um, amorphous and strange enough for you, not giving any night details, I don't know what to tell you. So. Um, Gorendas, how about you? <clears throat> well, in Lotro, um, there was a kin meeting last weekend, and our kin meetings always end with us going down the steps a bit and picking 
a keg, the Moria keg, the anniversary keg, the in-league sinister keg, a keg to drink from. And that that's, you know, kin meeting, normal kin meeting, kin meeting fun. But um, it turned into me meeting up with somebody who uh, landed in Las Gabel, who was like level 72. <laughs> <laughs> and started unlocking way shrines um all over the place so yeah that that was that was kind of fun um hanging out with the kin and and um using my hunter port port for good uh not much else in lotro this week um in eso dragons in our own hometown no 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 joke um the elsewhere pan elsewhere event is going on and and I, I fought multiple dragons and, and have went into delves that I hadn't been in yet. But the craziest thing kind of links to my, my last thing. Um, okay, so I already have a, a character to level 12 that I started about 24 hours ago. It is an orc necromancer. She had landed in Daggerfall to, to, um, to get knocked on the head and sent to Cold Harbor. And... I saw the shadow go over and I look up and a dragon has gone over and stops and hovers like it's gonna jet flames at the way shrine, the other side of the, the inn from where I was. I'm like, wait, what? And then circled and flew over and kind of did the same thing at the castle and then flew off over the mountains, you know, over the, the top of the uh, King Emmerich's castle there and, and over the mountains and disappeared. I'm kind of like, wait, 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 what? 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 That's awesome. So, yeah, evidently, um, this isn't something I've seen mentioned anywhere. I actually have, I, I managed to get a really bad, like, quick grab to my phone um, and, and took a picture. Uh, but, yeah, um, that was quite a thing to see on my little tiny level at the time, I think six, maybe. Character, yeah. The last thing you want to do is take on dragons that way. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, the spent a lot of time in elsewhere, which I love that zone in the game anyway. So I'm enjoying that. And um, yeah, that's about all I've done this week in gaming. Uh, Christer, how about you? Well, for me too, uh, it's been very very quiet in Lotro. Uh, a lot of our kinmates, I think, is just summertime. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we weren't even uh, able to get a uh, raid together last night. But we did do a few stairs runs, and we encountered uh, the uh, the event, killed that boogan, and uh, so that was pretty interesting. What what was really nice about doing stairs is that the people that were there, we did uh, uh, all the runs were very easy. Uh, for us to do, and that was a market improvement over the last time we had all gotten together and done stairs. So we were all pretty happy about feeling like our gear was getting better and better and better. Yeah, we get, it was getting easier to do that because once our kids back, we're going to stop doing Team 1, uh, Fall of Cause of Doom, and we're just going to start doing Team 2. And that's when that's when we expect, uh, you know, just basically piles and piles of corpses. Uh, <laughs> so that's not going to be fun. But uh, but we are at least feeling very good about that. We have the equipment that we're going to need for that. So, um, I'm, luckily, but you can me, get better. Oh. You can get better Balrog bits from here too, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. You would think that a tier five Balrog would be like the Beluga caviar Balrogs. I mean, <laughs> it would be a very. I mean, that's that's one of the first ones that was around. He probably drove the dragon. He was probably the one that drove the dragon around. He was the he didn't ride shotgun. He was driving the dragon. But, uh, <laughs> so luckily for me, with uh, Lotro being kind of quiet, the, the Minecraft server's been uh, up and running. So I've been playing the LPN Minecraft server, having a lot of fun. And uh, I had a revelation last night when I logged on to Lord of the Rings last, uh, to uh, start a group up. And I have I, you know, I have a problem with War Steeds and Lotro in that I... If I have an outfit, um, I have a war steed coordinated to that outfit. I have a problem with that. So, I in Minecraft, That's not I started. A problem. To, Define problem. I agree. <laughs> 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 but in uh, Minecraft now, I've been become obsessed with going out into the world, launching these expeditions to the ends of the earth to grab horses, 
And I believe now I've accumulated between 60 and 80 horses uh, in my adventures. And it's just ridiculous. It's, you go into the pastures and there's a ridiculous amount of horses. So um, I, f- I figured out last night, uh, in fact, I, Sands was on uh, last night, and I was like, you know what, I just realized it. I have a problem with horses in Minecraft because I have a problem with horses in Lotro. I have problems with horses. So that's probably good that I don't actually own a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sans, what have you been up to? Well, besides just now wondering how long it would take one horse to turn into 50 if you had a real one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made some new characters on the Shot Effect server. Um, in Lotro. And what? You made new characters? Gasp! I know. I made new characters. And <laughs> then I was feeling pretty satisfied with that. So we went to the Black Gate to help Kilbathian. And mostly our helping Kilbathian consisted in standing around uh, waiting for the next directions on where to go because, like, it was all very gray to us. Um... But that was also kind of fun. Um, failed to save the dude who was already dead again, and you know, heard about it. But, um, and then in ESO this week, I slew dragons, and I kept wanting to meet a Bjorning and be able to say, "I have slain dragons today." Can you say the same? Um, so, yeah, that happened. But it's been a lot of fun with everybody there to run up and kill dragons. Even though occasionally I get there, by the time I figure out where the dragon is, it's already dead. Um, which is a feature of having so many people out killing them right now, I suppose. And I've been working on a training center in Minecraft and I finally gave up getting the perfect trade on the last one and went with an almost perfect trade and now have all of the librarians who have the trades that I wanted and I'm working on a second wing so that we can get emeralds easier. So that's been fun, but I have been informed that the villagers would not like a trading center that is all cobblestone. So uh, now I'm working on making it less cobblestone-y. (laughs) <laughs> That's cobblestone. <laughs> With help uh, from Pine Leaf, who informed me that they would not like it to be all cobblestone. Uh, so now we've got some cool floor patterns going on, which Pine Leaf uh, put in for us. So thank you for that, Pine Leaf. You're welcome. And how was your week? I, for my week, we. I first off, I did a great deal of board gaming this week. I was playing. Quite a bit of Commands and Colors Ancients, where I finally finished playing the last of the battles in the base game. So now I've played all the battles in the base game for that game. And on also this week, I've noticed that there was a release of a Steam version of a game called Railroad Inc. Challenge. So I nabbed that one, so I've been playing that one a little bit, learning how to play Railroad Inc. and mixed results so far, so I need to get a little bit better on that. Then over on the Minecraft server, what I was doing there is I was building various farms. I built a dripstone farm. I built a lava farm. So now lava is a renewable resource and easy to get. And I also built a pumpkin farm. And it looks like uh, I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to make that the basement to the warehouse a little bit more secure because apparently there are some areas nearby where creepers are being spawned. And I just want to make sure that place is nice and safe. So I'm hoping to report a success in that operation next week. And that concludes our week in gaming. So let's. And into the donations. Where our top supporter this month was LotroBuild.com. It's a collection of of full Lotro databases that includes an items database, a relics database, and a titles database. Also, you can use it right from your Discord server through LotroBuild Bot. 
We currently have 16 supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to join this illustrious raid of players and help support Locha players, you can go to the Nations page. You can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. Your money would be used for our podcast hosting, website hosting, and to pay for our live shows. We did not receive any we did not receive any emails this week. If like since when you can send it to podcast at luchaplayers.com. You can also follow us on Twitter. Players Alliance at Players Ally, Loach Players at Loach Players, Arendis at Arendis, Piney Fit, Piney Fields, Senswinda at Senswinda, Terry Edwin at Terry Edwin, Guerendis at Guerendis, Calabathian at Calabathian, and Krister is taming horses in Minecraft. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> The Players Alliance has two shows on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News, and on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Loach Players News. You can choose for our shows at loachplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight, and this is Pipe Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly. <laughs>